I've been at the Hardy School for uh, three or four times now, and uh, it's a pleasure to be back because it gives me an opportunity to, you know, reason with political scientists, something I'm missing. When I go back to Tübingen, to the Global Ethics Institute, we'll address the question of consensus of globalization. And then those issues that you have addressed, how you compromise between people of different backgrounds with different expectations, comes to the forefront, and I'm glad um, I'll take something away from this um, for, for that new job. Um, you've uh, introduced us to the relevance of the question uh, of compromise, which is something that in Germany we may be uh, may need to be re reminded of because uh, obviously compromise is what we craft every day uh, in politics and in parliament and um, but it's something that we not often reflect the uh, art of crafting compromise and you've given us a typology uh, of compromise of deep compromise and of um, uh, shallow compromise and you've also shown us how that relates to issues of negotiation bargaining and uh, maybe also to reasoning, because maybe the better mode seems to me is that we need to reason uh, about compromise, not sort of bargain uh, compromise. So I think those are important distinctions, and they have um, uh, implications for it, the way we conduct, we should conduct um, our politics, what we should can promise in, a, in an election, uh, how we communicate about our politics, and then ultimately how we uh, build a common project uh, in a coalition, and I'll go into that in a, in a second. Um, I'd like to address um, the two main points uh, you made about the ethos of democracy and about the role of represented, uh, representatives as um, uh, representation as reflection of the voters. And I'd like to raise some uh, questions, some concerns, some problems that I see. Um, first of all, I think uh, it's indeed true that there needs to be a, a common ethos and overlapping consensus of Democrats uh, that builds the community of Democrats, uh, maybe a republic of Democrats. And um, I think that is often uh, something that we don't reflect upon in, in everyday politics. Um, we may have done that um, earlier on in the beginning, in the founding of our the German Republic, um, when parties still called themselves Democrats, Christian Democrats, Social Democrats, Free Democrats. And lately, I think this has become, if you look at the new parties, the Greens, uh, you know, don't specifically call themselves Democrats, maybe because it's so obvious that they are Democrats and the Pirates, they make um, uh, democracy an issue, but they don't call themselves uh, Democrats. So. Uh, I see that as a, uh, as a sign that we have forgotten to talk about this consensus of Democrats. Maybe we need to address and question why um, we've forgotten this. I think that's because we have a problem of competition in um, politics, in democratic politics. Um, in the parliamentary system, uh, the votes you get are the votes I don't get. Uh, so it's a zero-sum game. And, um, uh, there's competition and, and uh, we're not likely to distinguish uh, ourselves uh, from each other and you know go for the votes by uh, you know sort of building the consensus as Democrats uh, but rather by um, uh, pinpointing the differences as liberals as free Democrats as Christian Democrats as social Democrats so those are um, I think it's a, it's a problem of competition that um, makes us you know forget or should I say um, uh, not, um, uh, we're not tending to the compromise uh, as Democrats to the, to the um, overlapping consensus that we have. And I think it's hard to do. And uh, your model depends on you know, having this ethos uh, of Democrats, but I don't see um, the, the source of it. And I don't see the, uh, the incentive of people to you know, portray themselves as Democrats. Maybe you know, now the traditional parties are challenged by uh, the pirates and it'll be time to talk about democracy and renew the kind of democratic consensus that we have, but uh, certainly it's not um, something that is stronger, that, that you know, is a presence in everyday life of politics. And then the question is, well, why should um, we, why should we um, adhere or uh, stand on the grounds of that, that compromise uh, and that overlapping consensus um, if competition pays off in, in real day um, politics and brings us further ahead. Um, 
related to that uh, problem of competition is a problem, I think, of communication. As a small party, um, the Free Democrats don't get that much attention. So in order to get attention, we focus on certain positions. Uh, we've focused on one position in particular, and that's uh, tax uh, relief. And uh, that's been a position that the Free Democrats have pushed for at least 16 years. And that has sort of become a uh, sort of brand um, recognition theme for the uh, Free Democrats, the, the, the party of tax relief. Now, um, that, that position is really easy to communicate. And um, uh, it is a position that uh, you know, need to deliver on. We couldn't deliver on it, and so now the whole brand is sort of broken. Now, um, some people are saying, well, we didn't just communicate this one issue. We've always been you know, more than a one issue party. But it's also true that we have concentrated, especially in election campaigns where we get the attention, we've concentrated on that position. And um, now we, of course, didn't want to compromise on it. We had to compromise because, well, reality. Um, and then we're, uh, well, we're in a corner. We're you know, down at uh, a couple of three or four percent, um, uh, about a third of what we used to have. Um, and I think uh, the problem of communication that we have is that um, if we focus on a position that we cannot compromise on later, that, that you know, makes us look compromised if we compromise on it, uh, is often the only way to mobilize voters and to get the uh, attention of voters. So I think that's a problem that we needed to resolve, and I think that we have resolved in a way that we have switched from communicating positions to communicating an intention, which is growth this, this time around. So it's not a position, but it's an intention. It's something that we, as political actors, I think is, a, is an answer to the problem of well, how can we compromise on, on things if we've sold our souls on one particular position? And it raises uh, the question um, to what, what should we come into the political arena with? Um, uh, should we go there with positions or should we go there with principles as you proposed? Or should we go there with, um, well, I, as I would say, we should go there with intentions, uh, with uh, effects that we would like to, um, uh, to see. And if we communicate the intentions, the kind of effect that we would like to see, the impact that we would like to make, um, then we are also communicating more of, of the interests, our interests, not our preferences. Uh, we communicate the project, uh, not necessarily the principles of that project. So um, I'm saying what, um, in order to make compromise um, possible in a media society, I think we, as parties, need to change the way we communicate and the kinds of positions or the kind of um, news, well, the, the kind of um, message, basically, that we send out. Uh, and we need to um, focus on, on intentions, not on uh, positions, on interests, not on preferences, on projects, not on principles. That calls into question, you know, the, the weight you've given to principles. Mm. And um, I'd like to call that into question um, um, uh, from another perspective, too, uh, you've given great emphasis to uh, the moral substantive uh, principles. Whereas I would um, ask whether uh, the, the democratic ethos is not much more so a procedural ethos. It's, about, it's um, one where I know that we're in a democratic process. And uh, in order to get ahead, we can only you know, make the steps that we, that we can make. Um, so. Uh, we have a democratic ethos that's uh, conscious of democratic politics as a process, um, then we avoid you know, the, the problem of having to build common moral ground as Democrats, which you know, we're not in, interested or in, incentivized to do. Um, but we're, um, we're focusing on another sort of narrative about uh, democratic politics, which is a narrative that uh, democratic uh, politics is necessarily step by step, um, is a step by step process. It's a process where we can realize, you know, that um, uh, the, the, our preferences, our ideas, our interests, our intentions uh, only uh, so far, and then we can not um, give up but postpone uh, further advances in, uh, in the kind of politics or the kind of vision of a society that we have. 
So I'm, I'm proposing to change the, um, uh, the paradigm, so to speak, for the democratic ethos. Uh, you know, don't build it on moral grounds, build it on procedural uh, practice. You know, uh, be conscious of the kind of process and the kind of um, headway that's necessarily um, step by step. And then you will also take off some relief um, from democratic actors. Um, so that they don't feel they compromise themselves. They're just postponing um, the realization of, um, of what they want. Um, lastly, uh, I'd like to make a, a case for shallow compromise. I think shallow compromise, um, you know, it gets a bad name uh, from how you arrange it, and it's easy to give it a bad name. Uh, on the other hand, of course, uh, some shallow compromises are easy to make um, and they're easy to realize um, because of the different preferences that we give to um, positions that we, that we give up. You know, we can easily compromise on things that aren't you know, to the core of our, um, of our beliefs. And then it's, um, I think shallow compromise has a place and, and a function um, because as in any negotiation package um, or in any negotiation, Sometimes we win by um, building packages and um, by balancing uh, certain um, needs and aspirations of, of uh, the parties. And that's also, I think that's also good. And people understand that you, know, you need to balance it off. And I think there's acceptance um, for the kind of shallow compromise um, that we should also build on. Um, it's not the entire thing. I would any, advise any coalition to have a common project to build on intentions to reason their way to a common uh, consensus and not just negotiate prior positions. Um, so uh, my advice to political actors would be go out there, communicate intentions, uh, don't communicate your positions. Then once you're in a coalition, build a common project, build a common consensus. Um, don't just try to uh, you know, arrange um, in negotiations, arrange uh, certain positions, sort of uh, balance them. I think that's a practical takeaway, um, and I thank you for raising the question of compromise, and I'm sure it will um, uh, make for a good topic of discussion. Thank you. Thank you.